Okay, let's talk about fractions and how to reduce them or put them in simplest form. If I have the fraction 15 twentieths, what I need to do is I need to ask myself, what is the greatest common factor? Or what's the biggest number that goes into both 15 and 20? Now, what you could do is you could, kind of off to the side, if you wanted to do a little factor rainbow, you could say, okay, well, I know it's 1 times 15, and I know it's 3 times 5. And for 20, it'd be 1 times 20 and 2 times 10. And what's the other one? Oh, yeah, 4 times 5. Kind of hard to see there. And what's the biggest number in both rows? Oh, there it is. Biggest number in both rows is 5, which means I need to divide both the top and the bottom, because remember, we know that you can do anything you want to the numerator of a fraction as long as you do the same thing to the denominator. So 15 divided by 5 is 3, and 20 divided by 5 is 4. So 15 twentieths, which is kind of an ugly fraction, can be reduced to 3 fourths, which is a much more attractive fraction. Look at this one here, 36 40 fifths. What's the greatest common factor? What's the biggest number that goes into both of these numbers? Now again, you could do 36, 45, and do a factor rainbow for each. Or, remember, the goal is to be able to look at these and really say, hmm, and just to kind of, if you know your facts well, hopefully you would be able to see what is the number that I'm going to need to divide the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator by. And if you wrote these all out, you would figure out that the biggest number that goes into both of these is 9. Biggest number that goes in is 9. So 36 divided by 9 is 4. And 45 divided by 9 is 5. Wow, 4 fifths. Look how much prettier that fraction is. If I said, draw me 4 fifths, you could do it pretty easily with here. If I said, draw me 36 40 fifths, that would not be an easy way to do it. Remember, another way that you can try to reduce is you could start with the numerator, and you can ask yourself, can both the top and the bottom be divided by 15? You'd say yes, no, then go down one. Can I divide the top and the bottom by 14? No. 13? No. 12? No. 10? No. Excuse me, 11? No. 10? 20 can be divided by 10, but not 15 without getting a remainder. And so keep going. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 15 divided by 5, that works. 20 divided by 5, that works. That is another way that you can do it. Keep working your way down from the numerator, and the first one you come to will be the greatest common factor. Then we talked about how do you take an improper fraction and write it as a mixed number? Well, you could draw it out, or the shortcut, remember, how many times is 15 excuse me, 5 go into 16. How many times does it go in? It goes in 3 times, because 5 times 3 is 15. So how many would I le be left over with? If I had 15, you would have 1 left over, and the denominator stays the same. 5 goes into 16 3 times. That would be 15. So then I would have 1 left over, because 16 minus 15 would be 1. My remainder would be 1 denominator stays the same. So how about this one here? 7 goes into 33. It goes in once, goes in twice. How many times does it go in? It would go in 4 times, because 7 times 4 is 28. So how many would I have left over? 33 minus 28. How many would that be? 5 left over, and the denominator stays the same. Okay? And then in terms of going backwards, how do you go if I have a mixed number, a fraction, and a whole number, how would I go backwards? Remember the shortcut here is you multiply the denominator times the whole number and then add the numerator. So 3 times 2 is 6, and then add the 2. So 3 times 2, 6, plus 2, 8, and as always, the denominator stays the same. So over on this one, we're going to multiply, add, multiply, add. 6 times 6, 
36 plus 5, 41. And as always, the denominator stays the same. Okay, so that is fractions.